Welcome to Indian Council of Medical Research online prescribing skill course 2020 for Indian medical graduates. I, Dr. Yashasri Shetty, is going to talk on dermatological disorders. So, at the end of the module, you have to attempt 5 multiple choice questions based on this video. You will find these MCQs in the assignment section. I am from St. GS Medical College, KEM Hospital and this module was prepared by me with the help of clinicians Dr. Sananda Mahajan and Dr. Vidya Kharkar and it was reviewed by experts Dr. Suparna Chatterjee and Dr. Nilima Shirsagar. At the end of the module, the learner should be able to state the general principles of drug prescribing in dermatology with emphasis on topical formulation. Discuss the principles to be followed while using steroids for dermatological conditions. Prescribe rationally for common clinical conditions such as tinea infection, scabies, impedigo and leprosy. State the key features of monitoring the therapy outcome for the above mentioned conditions. Now there are competencies related to this topic uh, given in MCI 2018 document which includes 20 competencies related to this topic in pharmacology, microbiology, medicine, pathology, pediatrics and dermatology. Out of these, some of the common ones are prioritized for this module. Principles of topical therapy in dermatology and principles of steroid therapy in dermatology, dermatophytosis, scabies, impedigo in children and leprosy. Now we will understand why this topic is important. Now skin diseases are ranked as fourth most common cause of human illness resulting in enormous non-fatal burden on the economy. There is increasing load of patients in general practice, but the general practitioners are not trained to treat them. Irrational use of drugs is on rise leading to patient harms which should be curbed by rational prescribing practices. So an Indian medical graduate should be able to diagnose and treat few common skin conditions and they should be able to refer for specialist advice whenever required. As we know there are general principles of drug prescribing in dermatology especially in that we are focusing on topical preparations. To begin with the first principle is the selection of the type of local preparation depends on the diagnosis and the age of the patient. So your diagnosis has to be correct. The second principle is selection of the drug form changes on the type of lesion whether it is dry or wet and the area affected whether it is central example is face or genitalia or peripheral. The third principle is the efficacy of the preparation depends on the inherent potency, ability to penetrate skin, concentration of medication, frequency, duration of treatment and use of vehicle. And the last principle is if the patient is compliant to the medication. So overuse can lead to toxicity and underuse do not treat the condition at all. So now we will discuss the steps for applying the topical preparation. Now one finger unit is the distance from the tip of adult index finger to the first crease of that finger. Now when we have an ointment tube pierce the seal by inverting the cap of tube and pushing it into the end of the tube. Wash the affected area of the skin well and rinse away all the traces of soap or cleanser. Pat the skin dry and apply the cream or ointment thinly and evenly to the affected area. Gently massage the cream or ointment into the skin until it has all disappeared. Replace the cap on the tube and wash your hands after applying the cream. Now the quantity of the cream required in adults varies with the affected part of the body. So one finger unit is required for both sides of the hands. Two finger units are required for one foot. Three finger units are required for one arm. Six finger units for one leg and seven finger units for chest and abdomen and seven finger units for back and buttocks. Now here is the pictorial representation of one finger unit and the quantity to be applied to the affected part of the body. Now steroids are the commonest preparation used in dermatology. So now we will discuss the general principles of steroid prescribing in dermatology. 
the selection of steroid depends upon the accurate diagnosis, correct drug, appropriate vehicle, potency and frequency of application. The vehicle selection also depends on the region affected and the type of region present. For example, ointments are administered for thick hyperkeratotic lesions. Absorption also depends on the thickness of the skin. For example, eyelid absorption is 300 times more than the soles and increases tenfold in disease states such as inflammation and desquamation. Steroids cause adverse effects which can be local or systemic. The local adverse effects are skin atrophy, stria, rosacea, perioral dermatitis, acne and purpura. While the systemic adverse effects can be seen after continuous use of the drug for more than 6 months. Glaucoma, hypothalamic pituitary axis suppression, Cushing syndrome, hypertension and hyperglycemia. Now as you see steroids are classified into 7 classes according to that potency from least potent to the super potent drugs. The details of the different steroid preparations are available and are provided in the reference material. Now we will start with the case scenario. A 25 year old male poultry worker with 3 to 4 weeks of history of pink to red annular patches and plaques with scaly border involving smooth skin of forearm complaints of pruritus and reddening on scratching was referred for mycological examination. The resulting isolate was identified on basis of microscopic and macroscopic features. Now how will you arrive to a diagnosis in this case? Now the symptoms can be itching, burning throughout the day, irresistible with family history of similar complaints. If the appearance of the lesion is ring shaped, central clearing, active border and scaling then the diagnosis is treatment neotenia corporis. But if there is a history of application of over the counter drug with an FDC containing steroid with antifungal drug and the lesions are ill defined, micropapules diffuse with decreased scaling, increased erythema or increased telendexasia, then the diagnosis is steroid modified tenia. Now, in the present case, it is treatment nave tenia corporis. There are two lines of therapy local and systemic. If the lesion is localized, drug nave and chronic and if the patient is a child and a pregnant woman then the treatment should be local application. But if the lesions are widespread and patient is non-compliant with the topical therapy or the topical therapy is inaccessible for example back and buttocks then the systemic therapy is preferred. So now for the presentation and the microscopic examination the diagnosis in this case is of tenia corporis. Now for the treatment of tenia corporis, there are various classes of drugs available, namely imidazoles, triazoles, allylamines, amlorophine and amphotericin B. Now how to choose a drug for our patient? Now the various preparations, frequency of application and duration of use depends on the site of infection is given in your reference material. Now for systemic therapy, there are three lines of therapy. Tablet brucefalmin 500 to 1000 mg daily for 2 to 4 weeks. Tablet terbinafine 250 mg daily for 1 to 2 weeks. Tablet itraconazole 100 mg daily for 2 weeks and 200 mg daily for 1 week. The minimum duration of treatment should be 2 to 4 weeks in drug new cases and more than 4 weeks in recalcitrant cases. Now if you apply the rational use of medicine step criteria of selectivity, tolerability, efficacy and price for choosing a drug for tenia in the present case, Miconazole, Turbinafin and Itraconazole are equi efficacious. For the patients, the drug most suitable are Miconazole and Itraconazole. Grisofalvin has more adverse effects as compared to others and Turbinafin is costly. So along with antifungal drug, Antipruritic drug like cetrizine or levocetrizine can be prescribed. So the final drug prescribed for patient with tenia corporis is 
topical meconazole 2 percent cream applied for 2 to 4 weeks along with tablet levocetrizine 5 mg as and when required because itching is significant and decreases the quality of life of patients. Patients should be advised to apply the cream for minimum 2 weeks after the clearance of lesion. If there is no clinical cure then continue with the same therapy for the same duration or change the therapy and include systemic therapy. The physician has to monitor for drug toxicity by investigating for liver enzymes. Monitor every week for cure, relapse and reinfection. If a cure is not achieved after 8 weeks of treatment, refer the patient to appropriate dermatologist. Now some of the important do's while treating a, a patient suffering from tinea are diagnosed by symptom complex, erythema, pruritis and desquamation. Check for grades, sites and extent affected one patch or extensively affected. Check for hygienic condition, area of stay and prevalent weather conditions. Non-pharmacological treatment has to be prescribed. Keep the area dry, frequent changing of socks, wash the clothes regularly, dry them in sun and iron inside out. Tell the patients to wear loose fitting garments made up of preferably cotton. Call the patient for regular follow up and check if the lesions heal or the severity has reduced or else after 4 to 6 weeks change the drug. Don'ts while treating the patient do not use steroids alone or as an fixed dose combination with an antifungal drug. Do not prescribe two antifungal drugs without knowing the status of the liver. Instruct the patient not to share garments with anyone. Now the next case scenario is Sakina. A 26 year old woman comes to the OPD with a 7 week history of rash which is worse on her hands. It is extremely itchy particularly at night and she is worried that she could pass on the rash to her 4 year old son. Now how you diagnose this case? The symptoms are generalized itching, family history of itching and increases at night. On examination you find burrows, excoriated papules, vesicles on webbed spaces, flexors of wrist, elbow and abdomen on genitals, papules and nodules. If the patient is a child, face is involved and if it is an adult, the face is spared. So definitive diagnosis can also be made by macroscopic identification of mites, eggs or mite fecus from the skin scrapings. In the present case, based on the history, symptom complex and examination finding, diagnosis was scabies. The recommended therapies are permethrin, ivermectin and benzyl benzoate. Alternative treatment are also available but are not that popular due to lack of efficacy. These details are provided in the reference material. Now if you apply the rational use of medicine again step criteria for choosing a drug for scabies, topical permethrin and oral ivermectin are equi efficacious. For this patient, the drug most suitable would be permethrin. Benzyl benzoate has issues with application less efficacious and has more adverse drug effects as compared to others. And permethrin is costly. Along with anti scabicidal drugs, anti pruritic drugs like cetrizine or levocetrizine can be prescribed. So the final drug prescribed for the adult patient with scabies is permethrin 5 percent cream applied from neck to sole of feet and washed off after 8 to 12 hours. In children the application can be from head to sole of feet. The treatment must be repeated after 7 to 14 days. Tablet levocetrizine 5 mg once a day has to be given. The patient should be advised to follow up every week for adherence of treatment and cure. The physician has to treat the contacts. The treatment failure can be due to improper or inadequate application. Look for reinfestation and resistance to the therapy. If the patient does not get relief after 4 weeks, then refer to a dermatologist. There are some instructions given to the patient suffering from scabies. All contacts must be identified and treated and patient should be advised about the following. Maintain proper hygiene, wash bed lining towels and clothing with soap and water followed by sun drying and ironing, clean rooms thoroughly with household disinfectants, vacuum carpeted floors. 
Now what are the don'ts for the patient? Physician should not miss to ask a family history, do not use steroid creams for itching, do not share towels etc. with the family members, do not forget to tell the patient to take a repeat dose on 10th day. Physician should not confuse scabies with fungal infection. Now this is the third case in dermatology for discussion. Tukaram is a 2 year old boy seen in a clinic with infected mosquito bite on his face and limbs. He has no medical history of note or no known allergies. On examination he looks well. There are numerous excoriated papules on all his limbs and 5 discrete small patches of erythematous skin covering with yellow crusting on his upper lip, nose, chin and arms that he reports are itchy. How will you arrive to a diagnosis? If a symptom complex has erythematous papules, vesicles, pustules that rupture and dry discharge forming honey colored crusts on erythematous base and the child has fever or no fever and on examination crusted erythematous erosions often are surrounded by a collar of roofs remnants you undergo a skin culture where you can get an staph aureus or a beta hemolytic streptococci. So in this case based on the history of mosquito bite examination findings are honey colored crusts on the erythematous base and in culture it was found to be staph aureus the diagnosis in this patient is impedigo. Now impedigo can be bullous or non bullous. If a lesion is bullous or non bullous for a single lesion treatment is mipirocin or retapamolin topical therapy given for 5 days. But if there is a multiple lesions then the systemic therapy is preferred. If the bacteria is staph aureus then mupirocin is given for 7 days. For beta hemolytic streptococci injection penicillin is given. For methicillin sensitive staph aureus cephalaxine or dicloxacillin can be given. For methicillin resistant staph aureus doxycycline, clindamycin or sulfamethoxazole trimethoprim can be given. Now topical mupirocin for 5 days is prescribed if the lesions are less than 3 as it is efficacious, well tolerated and cost effective. Antisepsis at the local site has to be preserved. If there are more than 3 lesions then systemic therapy according to the bacteria present. Mipirocin, penicillin, cephalaxin or dicloxacillin, doxycycline, clindamycin, sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim for 7 days. Clean the skin with soap and water and dry before applying mipirocin. Mupirocin ointment 2% one application 3 times daily for 7 days. Follow up after 3 days for evaluating the response of the therapy. If there is no response prescribe oral antibiotic therapy. Instructions are keep the fingernails short avoid touching the lesions keep them covered with gauze if possible. Treat carrier sites apply antiseptic ointment to the nostrils wash daily with antibacterial soap cut nails and keep hands clean, identify and treat the source of reinfection, usually another infected person or a carrier in the household. Change and launder the clothes and line in daily. Instruct patient or child to avoid close contact with others, not to share towels or any other clothing. Stay away from school until crusts have dried out or for 24 hours after starting oral antibiotics. This is the last case for discussion in dermatology module. A 56 year old male presents with diffuse infiltration of face and episodes of epistaxis since 3 to 4 months. He also complained of swelling of feet not associated with pain or diurnal variation. On examination generalized smooth shiny skin with prominent forehead creases were seen. Loss of lateral one third of eyebrows was present. Bilateral ear lobules showed diffuse infiltration with elongation and shiny appearance of skin. Bilateral non-tender pitting edema up to two ankles with dry shiny skin was seen. No evidence of glow and stocking anesthesia or sensory deficit anywhere else on the body was noticed. Slit skin epismias are positive for acid fast bacilli and histopathology confirms lepromatous leprosy. The presentation of the patient is shown in photographs. The first two photographs show the generalized smooth shiny skin in the prominent forehead creases. Lateral one third of the eyebrows are present. The third photograph shows the ear lobe showing diffuse infiltration with elongation and shiny appearance of the skin. 
The fourth photograph shows the bilateral non-tender pitting edema up to ankles with dry shiny skin. Now details about the treatment of leprosy in adults and children has been given in your reference material. If there is any doubt while examining dermatological cases, please refer to a dermatologist. Do not misuse topical steroids. Do not use antifungal injudiciously. Give clear instructions to ensure drug compliance. Now the following are the references for tinea infection. Followed by references for scabies, impedigo and leprosy. These are additional links for all the diseases discussed. I would like to acknowledge the contribution of all the members of Rational Use Medicine Committee at say GS Medical College and KM Hospital. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you are ready for attempting the MCQs. Please go to the assignment section and attempt the MCQs and upload the answers. Please go to the assignment section for prescription evaluation which I feel you have already attempted. Thank you and happy learning.